audio. Okay. That looks good. Let's check everything. If we feel like loading. Come on, Boeing. I'm not talking about your assassination. I'm not talking about your assassination attempts this time. There's no reason to cut my internet. Uh, mute myself. Where is it? Edit video. Uh, go out here. Over here. Oh yeah, I am. For the large part, I'm I'm pretty definitively shadow banned at this point. I'm uncertain what I did exactly that caused them to do it. But uh, for those of you that are on my Patreon or send random things on PayPal, you guys are the predominant income source at this point. Head to the control room. Uh, dismiss. Come on. I've got that, got that. Top chat. No, we want live chat. Right, that should be set. Let me get this open and ready. Dreams. Oh, okay. Yeah, I already did set that one. Okay, so we have all that. And I could have had a lot more slides, if you want to call them that. But uh, I was lazy like I always am. Maybe that's actually what YouTube doesn't like. So actually, wait. Wait, the, the view count drop started all of a sudden. That, that started once I started doing the transition stuff. Between, like, between shots. Like, once once I started actually, like, quote-unquote, putting effort into the videos again. That's all this. I just realized that's when they started suddenly not getting as many views. That's interesting. So people like lower effort stuff. That's kind of cringe, actually. All right. Uh, I'll start this for real in a little bit. Uh, probably just after five minutes. And this shouldn't be too long unless I go, uh, you know, just rambling off for too long. So I'm going to check stuff real quick and give whoever's going to show up another two and a half minutes or so to show up. Uh, everything is relatively in the same place it was before. I don't think anything else will have come out on OGJ. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, okay, that's mostly the same stuff as earlier, so nothing particularly new. Uh, two minutes till I start everything. All right, Josh is here this time. I... Threw way too many arrows on this note sheet, so I'm going to probably confuse myself over the process of this. Sorry, I gave myself a second to yawn there. Oops, uh, actually, probably be easier to go this way, maybe. I don't know, I think. Essentially, let's go here. Come on. Come on. Let me go down here and here. So uh, I am continuing to finish and complete all the uh, the resource docs and stuff that are not yet complete. Like I promised I would. So I have uh, like the uh, I finished the uh, the oil and gas revenue versus uh, rest of their economy things for the uh, the petro states. I'm like I promised I would. Now I'm working on finishing this doc full of uh, the birth rate graphs of different countries. Uh, the top 13 or 14 are just the countries that have populations of over 100 million. Then after that, as I state here, 
it turn it switches into alphabetical order relatively. I think I messed up in a few places, but I should have those finished soon. And then uh, I already finished the demographic transition factors essay that I talked about. I think I have all countries or at least most meaningful electricity consuming countries, electricity generation source pie charts done. Uh, I have all the ex oil and gas exploration areas uh, explored versus unexplored done. I am going to uh, work on finishing the inflation adjusted GDP graphs. Uh, I got all the metal and resource production graphs. That's all done. So I am completing everything uh, like I promised I would. So I am working on stuff constantly. Uh, and then we'll have to work on it again, obviously, each year as the data changes because another year passes. But so that's all uh, there. And you can find that link to the that folder with all these different docs under the most recent videos or in the profile uh, on the channel page. And that... Six minutes, 14 seconds. Okay, so that's good enough. We've gotten here. Uh, everything should be up and running. Live chats, blah, blah, blah. Uh, super chats. What is, what is this? What is this plus sign? I know that's the super chat thing. What's the plus sign? What is this? Oh, oh, interesting. Q&A's, polls. Answer, you... I mean... Any questions you ask? That's technically already live, though. I mean, there's a 20-second delay, usually, but uh, the poll thing's interesting. I don't know. Maybe I'll use that sometime. Okay, so we're going to do a brief thing, uh, flipping back and forth between the same slides, because I'm really lazy, uh, of hopefully less than one hour. So uh, 2.13 Alaska time. Unfortunately, I'm not in Alaska, but... I'm never changing my time off of Alaska time. Uh, so hopefully uh, we'll finish before 3 p.m. Alaska time. That is the goal, so I don't occupy too much of Josh's time. Uh, so things start on slide zero, or step zero. Sunlight from a massive orb of condensed, primarily at the moment still hydrogen and helium, uh, fusion far off in space. Uh, although relatively not that far, sunlight energy bursting from that fusion process falls up upon plants on Earth, particularly upon the leaves of crops, food crops. Photons impacting specific molecules inside the chlorophyll, inside the chloroplasts of these plants, rigor chemical reactions, which cause those plants to suck up specific materials out of the soil and out of the air, and form. Uh, sugars and starches and all kinds of other things that we then eventually eat. And so then, uh, somewhere in the world, uh, maybe not this specific farmer, but this looked like a happy dude, so I picked him as the farmer. Uh, so somewhere in the world, whichever country, whichever particular region you decide uh, to set your scenario in, uh, a farmer then gets up and uh, said farmer eats some kind of food, whether uh, straight out vegetables and fruits, probably part of it, uh, whether bread or cereal or some kind of, uh, this is just my own picture of a thing of cookie crisp because I'm lazy, uh, eats food, that food is composed of those crops uh, and the energy that was then imbued upon them and that they used to transform into sugar and starch molecules and the like with the energy from that sunlight. Uh, he eats that, and that then is converted into his body energy, which he uses to move around, uh, climb aboard a tractor or combine of some kind, and harvest those crops, those crops that are absorbing that fusion-emanated solar energy and turning it into molecules that we can then break down into our energy to do things. So he harvests those, and those then get loaded onto some kind of mass uh, bulk transport at first, usually a train. And that a train, that vehicle, will take those crops to some kind of plant somewhere, a processing plant, 
uh, whether that is just a plant where fruits and vegetables get washed and then packaged, or it's a place where wheat gets uh, ground up into flour and then made into bread or into cereal or something like that, or into uh, noodles or whatever, uh, spaghetti, something, insert your particular food choice here. Uh, that gets then turned into that, which then gets packaged and put on trucks. And those trucks uh, then take that around to stores, stores where people go to buy said food to eat. Some of those people uh, buying that food to eat being the drivers of said trucks, uh, who then, you know, eat that food and use that energy from that food, which came from the sunlight falling on the leaves of those crops to uh, triggering reactions that turned molecules from the air and soil into sugars and starches that uh, were then harvested by the farmer, uh, then shipped, you know, to that plant and then trucked by those guys themselves, along with anything else they truck, obviously, not just food, uh, to those stores where they bought it to eat and then use that energy to fuel their bodies to go about their daily processes, which in their case, their job is driving these trucks. Or in the case of, uh, you know, this train operator is operating this train. Or the people who maintain this train, they uh, go to that store and buy that food to then use that energy to go about their working day maintaining this train. Or maybe repairing these trucks. Uh, or operating uh, at, you know, this food plant where the food went. And some other people who go there and buy this food uh, use that to then meander their body about their daily process. Uh, some of those people are people who go to an oil field or an oil rig or an offshore oil platform where they use that energy from that food, which came from the sunlight falling on the leaves of the crop, which was then harvested by the farmer, which was then shipped uh, to the, the uh, packaging and milling plant, which was then shipped and distributed to the stores where those oil workers bought it. And they use that to uh, that energy from that food to go about their day controlling drilling mechanisms uh, where drills go down deep into the earth, boring uh, with massive amounts of energy through rock layers until they puncture oil reservoirs. Uh, the energy of tectonic processes of which has buried and pressurized them so much that to a large extent, the amount of energy we use to drill down and puncture them is effectively negligible compared uh, to them releasing themselves off of their own pressure, at least initially. Then you get into the field flooding stuff, but that's uh, more specific oil and gas things that you hear in other videos frequently enough. And so that oil then it comes up through the ground and it flows through pipelines and eventually goes to refineries where it is boiled, essentially, heated to extreme temperatures. It rises up through different levels inside these towers. And at different levels, uh, different portions of it will settle out because oil is a non-homogeneous mixture of different types of hydrocarbons. Some of those are long and thick. They turn into tar and things of the sort. Some of them are a little bit less thick, but still pretty thick. They turn into oils, waxes, and lubricants. Some of them are really long chains, but are still thoroughly combustible. They're combustible thoroughbreds. Those are turned into diesel and jet fuel. Others are a little bit less long, but still too long to be gasoline. Those are turned into... Uh, various specific chains that get cracked and broken down and recombined into different types of polymers. Then you get shorter ones up the top that turn into lighter fuels like gasoline. Then you get the shortest ones up top that turn into gases like ethane that are used to then fuel the boiling process in the refinery itself. And also uh, subverted aside over here to then be cracked and recombined in different configurations to make things like plastics. But blah, 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 blah. The point being from this step, a lot of that oil is refined into liquid fuel. That fuel is then put into fuel trucks, the fuel trucks using some of that very fuel themselves, uh, the energy contained within that fuel, that energy of which is actually... That same solar energy, not from those crops, but from lawn bygone plants, uh, particularly actually in the case of oil, it is 
algae and phytoplankton in the ocean that was buried, that all died rapidly in mass death events and was uh, rapidly catastrophically buried without being able to be eaten or decomposed by any other ocean organisms so that it was all entrapped without being able to, you know, properly decompose into, you know, the smallest possible uh, micronutrients and and molecular structures. And thus is why the oil is still in all these uh, all these different, you know, types of hydrocarbon lengths that we find it in because it was not able to decompose. So burning that energy uh, and the driver of said truck, like the drivers of those other trucks, also utilizing the energy from the food, from the sunlight falling on those crops harvested by that farmer today in the modern day, transports that fuel to a fuel station where vehicles can be filled with it. Some of those vehicles being... Uh, the farmer's vehicles, like his combines and his tractors, that he then uses to harvest those crops using uh, that, you know, formed edible things for us via that solar energy. The same solar energy that originally, long ago, fell into those uh, algae and phytoplankton that then were rapidly buried after mass death events in the ocean and formed into oil. Now, land plants did undergo similar processes and mass... Uh, uh, mass pre-decomposition burials. However, land plants turned into coal as opposed to oil and gas. It's the, the smaller organisms, the algae and phytoplankton, that turned into oil and gas. The land plants turned into coal. But farmer uses that fuel to run his vehicle, harvest the stuff, which then gets transported to the mill in a train or in trucks that are also utilizing that fuel that was refined from that petroleum. So then you go past that, and some of that fuel, not diesel though, but I didn't get a gasoline picture because I was lazy. I've explained that many times. Some of that uh, fuel is also put into uh, personal transportation automobiles used by workers, uh, other kinds of workers elsewhere to transport themselves to a place where they work, places like the oil fields or uh, the you know control center for this drilling rig, or this store, or uh, this chick transporting herself to this cereal production plant. You get the idea. And so some of these people then are also uh, power plant workers transporting themselves to the power plant that they work at, where electricity is generated, a form of energy, not an energy source, but a form of energy we utilize. That a uh, decent bit of which we do get from burning hydrocarbons, uh, usually in most cases, gas or coal. Some countries like Saudi Arabia uh, burn fuel oil, which is not a good idea. But uh, the main point here being that we do get a lot of this electricity from burning the ancient undecomposed plant matter and ocean uh, biomatter that we then uh, use to generate electricity by turning uh, by turning turbines, which run a set of magnets uh, through a, a winding of electrical wire, and the magnets spinning rapidly through that through that electric wire forces uh, the electrons along that wire and all the other wires that they're connected to, aka the entire electrical grid, to race along that wire. Then, because that's how magnetism, electromagnetism, works. Learn physics, and so. We figured out a while ago that by doing that, we can force that current to flow and put stuff in front of that current and it will do stuff to get the stuff out of its way is a very basic way of phrasing that. So now we're able to do all kinds of things like have lights and screens and stuff. And so that electricity then goes back to places like uh, this, you know, cereal mill and runs this machinery or uh, runs the lights and refrigeration systems inside these stores, and even runs the uh, runs the computers and management systems inside of the power plant itself. Although the power plant, unlike your house and unlike most places, does have multiple backups and fail-safe systems. Uh, but then, uh, also, as said, that electricity is used in stores, and in those stores, you also have workers at the stores 
who drove themselves uh, to the store, usually, or rode in public transit, uh, fueled by that fuel that was, you know, extracted from that oil that was formed from those plants that, just like these crops today, absorbed solar energy and then were eventually buried. Crops today are not buried. They're harvested by the farmer, obviously, and then eaten by people who include workers at a store who stock the shelves for you and put prices on stuff because it would be really interesting if you just walked through stores and you had no idea what everything costs and you just grabbed what you thought was a reasonable amount of stuff and then you got up and found out uh, actually that's you know five hundred dollars that would be fun but thankfully that's not how we do things because that would uh, be fun but also kind of stupid and so they stock the stuff at those stores and transport uh, themselves obviously to and from those stores in personal automobiles like these uh, unfortunately in some countries like america uh, a bit too much. Canada, you guys are the same way. So this isn't just a U.S. thing. Don't even try that angle. Uh, also, Australia, you guys do this way too much. Also, China even does this way too much. China is actually in love with personal automobiles. So don't even try that. That it's just an America thing angle. And uh, who, who are some of the others? Brazil and Mexico too are like really big, big into it, and uh, not doing the well. Uh, well-planned urban layout stuff. And some of the other, uh, some other people who also transport themselves to and from work in these automobiles, fueled by that fuel that was refined from that petroleum, uh, which, you know, was formed by the ancient plant matter decomposed uh, after absorbing the energy from sunlight, blah, blah, blah. Those people also ate food that was farmed by that farmer and used that to fuel themselves as they drive themselves to work and go about their jobs. Some of those jobs are at places like this aluminum plant here, where aluminum is refined and then utilized to make things. But first, it also has to be transported, and it gets transported usually by trucks, sometimes by train load. Uh, and we already discussed those trucks are also running on that same fuel, and those drivers of those trucks ate that food that was farmed by the farmer. And so then this aluminum gets transported to production facilities where things are made. Things like the tractor, the tractor that is used by that farmer to farm that food that has, you know, absorbed uh, the light from the sun, just like the plants did a long time ago that then turned into fossil hydrocarbons that are used to fuel that tractor and to fuel the trucks that uh, transport the aluminum to the factory to make that tractor blah, 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 blah. And uh, also, you know, are then used in uh, plants to make pers these personal automobiles, are used to make, uh, used to make large trucks, used to make, uh, even actually the shelves in these stores are usually aluminum because it's really lightweight and strong at the same time. Uh, usually the carts are aluminum as well. Aluminum's just, you know, a nice round out metal, good for a lot of stuff. And uh, then, okay, well, that's the steel plant. So we come to that in a second. Uh, some of the people then who drive in those automobiles that are made predominantly from that aluminum from that plant are people who then also work at a different type of metal plant, a steel plant, where steel is milled and refined and properly produced and is used to make many critical things like infrastructure materials, like railways. railways along which cranes roll, cranes carrying things like grain that was harvested by that farmer after the sunlight fell on it and transformed the various molecules into digestible molecules for us. So railways, along which trains go, carrying that grain, and also carrying tanks of fuel, tanks of crude oil itself sometimes, tanks of metal ores often that uh, then get refined into aluminum, into steel, blah, 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 and also just carts of goods themselves that then uh, go to smaller distribution uh, centers to get taken by trucks around to stores from which you then buy it and go to your job. Uh, one of which may be working to uh, use steel in another way, like constructing giant pylon towers, which hang these wires from, which, you know, transmit the electricity we mentioned just a little while ago generated at these power plants. That's, uh, you know, has to be transmitted across all these wire networks 
to go hundreds of miles from the power plants themselves out to everywhere across the world that's going to use it to do all kinds of things. Use it to uh, power different machinery inside of a steel mill or a assembly plant, a factory for vehicles or an aluminum plant or traffic lights, you know, governing the operation of these vehicles or the lights in the store or everywhere else, blah, 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 blah. We keep going. Some of that electricity is also used uh, to power pumps and monitoring machinery for doing things uh, like running conveyor belts, loading stuff into aircraft, or operating the fuel pumps for aircraft, that fuel which, of course, was refined from the oil that we mentioned before. And the workers there uh, ate that food that they got from the store that was farmed by the farmer, blah, 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 blah. And so then you have uh, all that going on for these aircraft, aircraft that are used to transport stuff very fast if the need is there for it, which usually includes things that are needed immediately to keep everything we just mentioned before going. So things like spare parts for uh, vehicles, like the trucks we mentioned, like the trains we mentioned, or machinery, like the factory components, or like the components of oil refineries that we mentioned, or electronics, which are really critical uh, because they are the control apparatuses behind most of this stuff, and thus it is very important to get them where they need to be extremely fast. And also, it is uh, very cost-effective in their part because they're very lightweight. They don't weigh a 1,000 pounds, so it's easy to pack thousands of them onto an aircraft. So said aircraft will then transport said planes around the world, and, of course, pilots aboard said aircraft uh, drove to their position or rode on public transit, perhaps, but most likely drove in some kind of automobile or were transported by some kind of vehicle operating on fuel refined from that petroleum that originally got its energy from the sun as it fell upon the photosynthetic portions of ancient dead plant matter. And they ate food that was farmed by that farmer who uh, got his own energy from eating food that was made from those crops that absorbed that solar energy and drove a tractor that was running on fuel that was refined from that petroleum. And so the endless interconnected cycle of this continues. Should I check chat? Probably. But this is a massive, massive, uh, incessant ramble. That's the point. Hello. Hi. Yo, 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 I don't know what that means. I'm assuming that means hi. Uh, no one is saying anything interruptive or specific. So I will continue on this. I have not even used the note sheet that I meant to like keep track of this. Somehow my brain is actually able to do this itself, which is amazing. That That is a very rare thing for me nowadays. I'm not talking about society. I'm talking about just me. Uh, my brain no longer truly functions like it used to because I am ancient now. Uh, but some of those electronics then are also used uh, in those very aircraft themselves to govern and monitor all of these systems and provide feedback. Those electronics are also uh, in the machinery and monitoring systems in the assembly plants that build the tractors, the trucks, the automobiles, uh, the components for those, uh, the smaller components for those various things, also the components for the oil and gas infrastructure, for the electrical infrastructure, and assembly and machinery plants that build components for assembly and machinery plants. Uh, they are also in. Uh, they're also in of electronics are also obviously in power plants. Uh, they're in the vehicles themselves. They're in the oil and gas stuff, monitoring all of that. And that cycle continues. And then from there, you progress on to. Oh, yeah, I was supposed to stop here. OK, now my brain is starting to fail. So as I said before, now those electronics are in the oil and gas stuff, monitoring that, including the refining process where some of that petroleum is refined into solid materials instead of fuel. Some of those materials being, for example, rubber, which we use to make tires because uh, a rolling mass along the ground or along a set of rails, along whatever have you, is, uh, turns out, you know, a lot more efficient than uh, just trying to 
exhaust brute shove a flat mass across a flat surface. So we use that rubber to make tires. Some of those tires are tires on the aircraft. Some of those tires are tires on the tractors used by that farmer to farm that food. Uh, some are used, many are used on personal automobiles to transport people around. Others are used on, you know, uh, whatever these things are called, I forgot, uh, just carts or dollies or something to move goods around in stores or in warehouses. And others are used on trucks to transport fuel and other critical materials. And some of those tires are even used on large, immense mining vehicles at uh, sites where ore containing high concentrations of those different aforementioned metals is dug up to be processed. For example, we've mentioned aluminum and iron already, but another one is here at this copper mine where you have these massive tires that were made from petroleum and this copper ore, which basically just looks like regular brown dirt to most people. Uh, because in a way, it kind of is. If you look real closely up, like hold it in your hand, there's some green in there often uh, from some of it that's oxidized after getting exposed to the air. But usually it just looks like dirt because that's essentially what all of it is. Uh, at this copper mine, where copper is refined, or where copper is dug up and then refined, uh, refined after being transported some large distance, usually by a train like this one, uh, rolling on those rails that were made from that steel from that steel mill, running on fuel that was refined from that oil, and uh, the operators of which eating that food that was farmed by that farmer after the sunlight fell on the crops and converted those molecules into edible molecules. That train then transports that to, instead of a cereal mill, a refining mill where the ore gets refined. And then that copper is turned into wires, predominantly wires, which are used to, you know, transmit electricity. Uh, electricity inside vehicles themselves the electricity uh the electricity cross electricity grids although the overhead wires like this are actually aluminum but that's a story for another day but electricity throughout electricity grids and throughout buildings where it then runs through different machinery to operate it and uh, throughout light bulbs and throughout these motors on uh, these factory arms working these assembly on these things and throughout everything else, that copper is there transporting that electricity after being mined by these massive mining vehicles made from that aluminum and that steel that we mentioned earlier and rolling on those tires that are ref uh, that are refined from that petroleum and also the vehicles themselves running on, on that petroleum. So that copper is also then used in some other functions like wound up into coiling wires as antenna to transmit signals that allow us uh, the instantaneous communication that we have been used to, such as uh, just general cell phone calls, uh, unfortunately, the use of internet everywhere, which might not be the best thing, uh, but also that gets used for reporting mechanisms, like reporting issues uh, with the electrical system, per se or with uh, the road itself around it, or in this case, with this light. So that copper uh, and the electricity flowing through it enables us then to send these automated signals, uh, whether reporting these, uh, whether just talking to people for the sake of it, or whether discussing results of some business meeting, or whether reporting issues like issues with this light, or issues with this pavement, or issues with the electrical connectivity, or issues with the very cell signal service itself, although that would be uh, a, a bit of a paradox. But you do this, and someone then comes out to fix that problem, like in this case, this light. And uh, this dude came out here to fix this problem in this vehicle, this vehicle that is made from that aluminum and that steel that we mentioned earlier, 
and that has its electrical components running on that copper that was refined, as we just mentioned a few seconds ago or a few minutes ago, and is rolling on these tires that is refined from that petroleum and is fueled by that fuel that was refined from that petroleum. And the dude himself, of course, ate food each day that was farmed by that farmer, not necessarily that specific farmer, but a farmer. And then this dude fixes a light, not this light. This is a different light, obviously. But these lights provide light, which allow us to conduct operations at night, which, you know, opens up the whole 24-hour thing, whereas previously we were restricted to 12. So now we have the whole double productivity thing going on. And this light is obviously running on electricity, which is transmitted from the power plant we mentioned earlier through the copper wires that we previously mentioned. And these lights enable us to operate stuff 24-7, uh, stuff like, for example, a glass manufacturing facility uh, where we burn sand until it melts into glass, mix it with some other things that are critical, like soda ash and limestone, and we get glass. Uh, those facilities operating 24-7, just like many other facilities, like assembly plants that we already mentioned, other types of factories, oil refineries, and then this glass goes on to make many things like windows or windshields on cars or the very glass of lights themselves for which they are providing the light not inside this furnace, but inside of the uh, the plants in which that furnace is contained. And so uh, there are also lights like that, except a lot brighter at uh, the night operations of various mining facilities. One of those facilities being one like this one, where we mined sand, industrial grade sand, that we then use to burn into glass to make windows and lights that then light up glass making facilities and mining operations and factories and oil plants and people's houses and the stores and everything else. And also, the sand is critical to, I misordered stuff, the manufacturing of concrete cement the two are not actually the same thing concrete uh, involves a lot of cement but cement itself is something different than concrete but uh, we use that sand also to make concrete which is a very resilient very hard and sturdy strong construction material that allows us to build things uh, especially the lower foundational portions of things things like uh, components, buildings, and infrastructure at mining sites, or at factories like glass plants, or uh, at uh, whatever other buildings are here. I don't know. That looks like some kind of. I don't even recognize that logo in the background. Uh, or here at uh, Tarmax on airports, or here underneath. Uh, Whatever these buildings are, Western Exterminator or something, uh, these uh, these crossbar portions uh, to which these rails are secured, everything, blah, 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 blah. Uh, and also the components of the oil and gas infrastructure uh, from which not just oil comes, but also natural gas, as aforementioned. And that natural gas then is used to burn in power plants to generate power to create the electricity that, throws, that flows through that copper wire that then lights up these lights and runs all that machinery. And also, some of that natural gas is used in furnaces like this one to melt that sand into that glass to then feed back into all of the same interconnected cycle. And then some of that concrete is also laid to construct other types of buildings and is, uh, you know, worked with and put down by these construction workers who drove to their job in automobiles or on public transit, fueled by that fuel that was refined from that oil, and uh, ate food that was farmed by that farmer who drove a tractor that was also fueled by fuel refined from that petroleum and made from aluminum and steel that was refined at those plants that was operated by those people who did all the same thing, blah, 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 blah. And so then... Uh, they lay this concrete and use it to construct buildings of various kinds. And in these buildings, various people do various types of jobs and things. One, uh, one of those types of jobs 
maybe, for example, fleet monitoring, a communications and weather tracking center, uh, and where, uh, you know, the, uh, the staff of a particular, say, shipping industry might handle all the logistical calls, directions, uh, like I said, fleet tracking and monitoring, and also uh, weather monitoring and informa- and uh, information generation for fleets of trucks, trains, aircraft, and also ships at sea. Whether ships contain, uh, whether they are ships transporting goods in cargo containers, uh, carrying crude oil or other things, or they are bulk carriers like this that are carrying some kind of solid material. For example, carrying those various ores that uh, we mentioned before that you know have to get mined, like copper ore and iron ore and bauxite ore, which is aluminum ore, but it's one of the ones that's called something different, or uh, say manganese ore, which very few countries have. Uh, so that is one of the holdbacks and reasons to why there is no real such thing as a self-sufficient country. But that is the subject for a video that is coming out soon, actually. But uh, ships like this bulk carrier here transport around those ores uh, so that they can be used to make things. In particular, manganese is usually one of the key ingredients of steel alongside iron. That steel then, apart from vehicles, gets also used in these iron be- in uh, these steel beams, these bars used to create buildings. The buildings, like we just mentioned, where, you know, stuff happens, like the monitoring of those very fleets transporting that ore that gets used to make those steel beams to make those buildings, or to make other kinds of buildings, like hospitals or schools, or uh, in in some ca- in uh, some cases, apartments and houses, uh, or, uh, or, uh, wow, I'm forgetting something. All right, my brain is finally starting to fail. Oh, yeah, and obviously factories in which all of the said before mentioned things are conducted. And some of that steel is also even used to make those very ships themselves that then go about to transport those ores that are used to make that steel that then gets used to make those ships. Or uh, those ships transport uh, ores that are used to make that steel to make those ships that transport that crude oil sometimes to countries where it is then refined into the various types of products like the fuel oil that those ships burn to transport themselves. And those ships are, of course, operated by crews of people who have to eat food every day that was refined by that farmer driving a tractor that is fueled by that fuel that was refined from that petroleum. And then also uh, that steel and other metals uh, like titanium for the cables are used to make the cranes that offload those vessels, cranes, uh, well, cranes, being used to pull up with big scoopers uh, the ore out of bulk carriers or more frequently seen uh, con- cargo containers off of container ships. And uh, but one of the one of those types of cranes does pull ore out of bulk carriers, and some of that ore might even be some kind of precious metal ore, like say silver, for example. And that silver ore in particular, or gold, or platinum group metals, although usually those are refined on site in South Africa, Russia, Canada, and the U.S., uh, and then transported in their actual refined form. But some of the others are transported in bulk, and those precious metals are then used to make those electronics because the microcurrents and nanocurrents require very specific, uninterruptible, unoxidizable, uh, like well, non-corroding material, and copper doesn't really cut it in that regard. So those are used to make those electronics, which are then uh, flown by those aircraft we talked about uh, around the world to where they are then used to construct those vehicles themselves that mine that very material or to construct those air, those aircraft themselves that transport that material, or to construct these systems aboard those ships that transport all the things that are then made at the factories that are also run by those electronics. And even uh, places like all the way back to the store, which was one of the earliest slides we started on, where people 
who work at the place producing those electronics also go to buy their food. Uh, which was grown by that farmer after sunlight fell on it and converted otherwise inedible molecules into edible molecules that we can then use as energy for our bodies to go about our day, whatever our given day comprises doing. And so the electronics are in that store as well. And yet another person who goes and buys food from this store is a person who works in yet another one of those buildings. In this case, uh, we go to a bank in which there are buildings full of people who monitor and uh, who monitor and facilitate the different types of financial transactions uh, of different institutions, individuals, companies, governments between each other. Some of those uh, some of those companies being those stores or the people who are buying things from those stores, and some of those uh, institutions they regulate the finances for being the very oil and gas industry way back here itself as it is making transactions, buying things uh, to continue maintaining its operations, refining that oil into not just the fuel and stuff we already mentioned and the rubber and other things, but also into another type of solid good that we'll suddenly jump into, which is plastic. Plastic being used as a versatile, lightweight, somewhat strong, if you make it right, material that has allowed us to replace metal and wood and glass, which all have various drawbacks that made them undesirable in various different roles. And so we then use that plastic to make different kinds of things, like plastic bags for garbage or these plastic bins in which we put the plastic bags. And those are, of course, made at factories of their own, factories that were constructed on concrete and with concrete and from that steel and from that aluminum and through which copper wires are run, transmitting that electricity that we all talked about that uh, goes back to the foundation of all this. And we put just, for example, these trash bins and bags in various types of buildings like those banks, like those stores uh, into which trash is gathered. And some of those buildings are even universities like this university where Max Hutier came from uh, and unfortunately is not now. But these universities are places where all of or most of the aforementioned people we've talked about so far go to be taught and instructed on how to do all of these various things. And they uh, undergo this instruction in buildings on the campuses of these universities. These buildings, of course, being built out of the aforementioned concrete, the aforementioned steel, the aforementioned aluminum, and being run through with the aforementioned copper wires so that they can operate lights and screens and machinery and uh, any other kinds of apparatuses needed in the course of the instruction. And people, of course, come to and from these buildings whether in public transit, like you can see the signs for there, because uh, we actually have really decent, well-operated public transit back up home. Uh, whether on public transit or in personal automobiles, people come to and from these buildings on uh, in vehicles running on fuel refined from that petroleum, rolling on uh, tires made from rubber refined from that petroleum, and the vehicles themselves also, of course, being made out of that aforementioned aluminum and steel and containing a bunch of that aforementioned copper wire. And also having windows made from that glass. And the buildings themselves have windows made from that glass that we discussed earlier. And everyone here coming I mean, to this building, whether the instructors or the to-be-instructed students, also ate that food that was farmed by that farmer and then transported by those train operators and those truckers, went through that mill to uh, process that food that is run by that electricity generated by that power plant, and uh, blah, 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 coming all full circle. And of course, everything in the building is run by those electronics that we talked about as well. And not just the things we aforementioned, but people uh, get instructed on many other things in universities. Uh, on one of the extreme ends of those things uh, includes rocket science and uh, telecom satellite engineering uh, and, and design specs in which people uh, design and operate, uh, learn how to design and operate and repair 
uh, and recover, you know, rocket systems that we use to launch satellites into orbit that other people, you know, learned how to uh, design and uh, learned how to design and manufacture. And we put these up in orbit, these of which, of course, are full of electronics and a bunch of other things that would be too much to get into for this particular video or this particular stream, since we're running pretty close to the line, but we are pretty close to the end because there's only 60 slides. And these satellites crisscross the sky above us and are part of what also allows us our instantaneous communication and allows us uh, mass weather tracking, which uh, aids in the timing of launching these and other satellites, also aids us in uh, knowing when ahead of time to stop various types of operations, uh, helps with directing fleets of ships at sea around storms, or with directing aircraft in the sky around storms, uh, or with just, you know, warning people in general of don't go to X area, it's going to flood and you're going to die. Whereas in the past, you would just go to X area when it flooded, get washed away in the flood and you would die. And so, uh, yes, like I said, uh, those help, uh, especially with the tracking of various fleets, fleets of ships, as we mentioned earlier, the ships running on fuel oil refined from that petroleum and being made of steel that was uh, the aforementioned steel, which itself was made from iron ore, which was transported on ships to those mills, which were running on electricity generated by that power plant, which was built out of uh, concrete and steel, which was made in that steel mill and at that concrete plant out of that uh, industrial grade sand that was mined up by vehicles that were made out of that steel and aluminum and running on fuel refined from that petroleum. Now, some of these ships are container vessels, which are carrying containers full of all kinds of things, uh, things that don't need to be instantaneously transported. Uh, so many of these are uh, just bulk supply components. Uh, for example, you know, vehicle and spare parts that are just part of regular orders uh, as the supply of a factory and not things that are replacement parts for the factory machinery. Uh, some of these might also be many of those plastic petroleum products uh, or other types of petroleum products, like, for example, insulation here, uh, which is installed in buildings to help regulate temperature and is installed by people who came to that building in a vehicle made out of that aluminum, made out of that steel, running on that fuel refined from that petroleum, and after eating breakfast, lunch, or dinner, made out of food that was farmed by that farmer. And some of these buildings uh, that are insulated include all the various buildings we've mentioned before, like uh, university buildings, like those banks, like those stores, like people's houses, that farmer's house, for example. Uh, some of them also uh, in include buildings in which... Uh, Let's go all the way back to an unlabeled building. Uh, here, this one, this looks like a, you know, NSA building. It's all black mirror stuff. Uh, some of those, uh, in some of those buildings, you have uh, people doing programming stuff, writing code, uh, the code on which the actual electronics themselves operate uh, so that we don't have to constantly actually do things to them to make them constantly function because that would defy the point. We offload that work onto the machines themselves and at the tail end onto other people, people like Josh, who is in the chat of the stream. Uh, although Josh is not programming at the moment, he did do stuff of the sort. And so uh, those are people writing code to run those electronics, which are then used to operate everything from the store equipment to the factory machinery to the vehicle systems themselves, to the oil and gas network, to the various uh, satellite communications network, tracking, you know, shipping fleets at sea, uh, blah, 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 blah. And also uh, running hospital equipment in, say, hospitals, which are also buildings that have insulation in them and have windows made out of the glass that we mentioned earlier that is made out of that burnt sand that is mined by those vehicles made out of that aluminum and that steel rolling on those tires made out of that rubber refined from that petroleum and fueled by the fuel that was refined from that petroleum being driven by somebody 
who ate that food that was that was uh, farmed by that farmer. And the doctors at said hospitals or just regular doctor's office are also running on the fuel of that food that was farmed by that farmer. Again, not all that one same exact farmer. Uh, that's That's too much work for one person. But a farmer somewhere. And they uh, treat people who are injured in any of those aforementioned things. Not sure how you would, you would get injured in a coding job. Uh, maybe Josh managed it somehow, if he wants to tell us. Uh, or injured in, uh, you know, installing something in a building, constructing a building, working on a ship at sea. Uh, maybe you got injured in rocket fire, I don't know. Uh, or uh, injured while doing cleaning stuff. Uh, maybe you slipped on the mop water. Uh, or just who got sick because, you know, influenza, uh, rhinovirus and, uh, and pneumonia bacteria are things that just exist. No matter what some conspiracy theorists want to believe, they are things that exist in the world and people catch them and get sick from them. Now, in the past, if you got sick, you just died. That's how it worked. Now, thankfully, in at least many countries, that's not how it works anymore, uh, for the time being. But, uh, they treat people utilizing various types of medical equipment, uh, a lot of which is, you know, plastic encased, you know, encased or made out of plastic that was refined from that petroleum uh, that is running and that uh, equipment is running on those electronics that was coded by those coders in that building, uh, both the hospital and that building in the factory in which all of it was built uh, or in which all of it was assembled, being built out of the aforementioned concrete and steel and aluminum and uh, running obviously on the aforementioned electricity, which is running through all of that copper wire, uh, which was also mined by those vehicles, uh, which themselves have a bunch of copper wire and are made out of the aforementioned aluminum and steel rolling on those tires that are made out of that petroleum running on fuel that was refined from that petroleum. And then somewhere else along uh, down the ladder at a far less useful run, uh, there are some of those electronic components running on electricity generated by, generated by that uh, uh, that uh, that power plant uh, running through that wire from that copper that was refined in all that process uh, is being used by some guy uh, who is now telling you all of this through a computer system that is utilizing the aforementioned instantaneous communication network and is running on set electronics and is uh, unfortunately not running off of energy from this British sport bar because those cost money. And this photo is from a while ago, uh, back when I still lived up home in Alaska and had money to constantly buy German chocolate. Uh, but I am running on energy that I did get from food that I consumed and that food was made from some, you know, crops that were farmed by a farmer who did, you know, drive a tractor running on fuel refined from that petroleum. And the tractor is made out of aluminum and steel that were mined up at those mines uh, with vehicles made out of that aluminum and steel running on fuel that was refined from that petroleum. And this is where it cuts and almost in perfect timing as well. And it only cuts here. Because I'm lazy and I didn't want to keep going because I can carry this on forever and I can keep adding another circular link into this pattern because it is not a chain. It is a insane overlaying thin, almost like a, a Venn diagram kind of, I guess. But there's a billion different individual things. And instead of all intersecting in the middle they all just entirely over intersect each other in every possible way in four dimensions. So that is, that was the final slide, right? Okay. That is the final slide. Ooh, it's me. Uh, so that is how the world works in one particular meaning of the phrase, because the phrase how the world works is, uh, as I said in the description of the stream, it is enormously contextual. Enormously contextual. You could mean so many, so many different things from so many different angles uh, of saying that phrase. But this is one of the uh, variations on what that phrase could mean. 
<laughs> and now I'm going to chug some water and check chat in a second and also wait to see if anybody uh, asks anything or super chats or whatever, in which case I will respond. But if not, then I will uh, take my exit. Okay, I think that is, oh no, oh no, Josh, Josh the programmer in here with his eye strain and his posture. Bro, get on my level if you want bad posture. Actually, you are on my level, I forgot, you have horrible posture. Uh, you just, your horrible posture is just like a, a, at a different angle, literally, like not even metaphorically, literally, uh, it actually applies literally at that time, a different angle. Of horrible posture. But uh wait. Gripping has did you did you guys not have all of your uh your power cords like tucked under the desk like they're supposed to be? Or did did you actually have one of those like weird setups where like you had a million power cords just running across the floor and you vaguely secured them to the carpet with duct tape? Uh, no, the, uh, the, the, en the energy balance has always been positive. It's the degree of positive that matters because the, even before the industrial revolution, when it was literally just us running on the energy we got from eating the crops, the total net energy yield of society was vaguely around two to one, or if you had worse regions of the world, uh, sometimes it was as low as one and a half to one. Whereas now, uh, did I relocate this graph? I probably did. All right, hold on. Let me find the graph because I did make a graph of this, actually. Now, keep in mind, there is no real, like, definitive way to track this. So uh, this is uh, a lot of this is going to be. Uh, very vague extrapolations and like, you know, the best I can pull up. But, uh, right, where did I put it? I might have actually put it in streams. That would be, oh, there it is. So, yeah, uh, this is relatively how it has gone. And uh, ironically, uh, everyone usually just assumes uh, it will go in this one general direction and then in this one general direction. But it does have different undulating patterns, though. Uh, like, we did a rapid crash there uh, through 2000 up through uh, the very early 2010s uh, as, or actually through the, through the mid-2010s, as the bulk of new stuff, especially oil-wise uh, and natural gas-wise, that was coming into play was predominantly shale and uh, various types of heavy oil like the tar sands in Canada. However, since the later 2010s, uh, I have not uh, been able to add the stuff from the uh, first four years of the 2020s here yet. But since then, after falling down to 37 uh, or 38, we've actually crept back up to just about a uh, global average net yield of 40 to 1 because of how much of the new stuff that has come on in the last 10 years or so has been actually a lot more conventional stuff and a lot more stuff that is under high pressure uh, gradients. Like uh, a lot of the, uh, since Iraq, for example, was one of the most untouched ones out of the Persian Gulf nations, uh, they are, they're one of the ones where we actually keep finding a, a bunch of new stuff. Like a few years ago in 2021, I think, uh, we made that huge discovery. Uh, so, for example, uh, the the petroleum-bearing rock layer, uh, the, uh, the permeable rock layer, usually sandstone or shale, uh, 
uh, or in some cases, some types of carbonate. Uh, but usually the rock layer, uh, you'll get like a, a layer that is permeable where you'll have the petroleum. For most fields that you find, usually it's anywhere from 60 to maybe 200 feet thick of permeable reservoir layer. Uh, sometimes up to 300, like in some of, you know, the big cases off of Brazil. But uh, one of the ones in Iraq that was just discovered in some of the places of Iraq that were literally had not had oil and gas uh, exploration conducted in them yet, uh, back in, I think, 2021, had a, uh, had a permeable uh, layer, a hydrocarbon bearing layer that was over 1,000 feet thick. Uh, that is one of the the thickest layers that we have ever found. And it is near surface, it's conventional, and it's under high pressure. And that will be coming online into production uh, in the second half of this decade and is the one that should pump them up uh, by enough to, at that time, uh, jump to close to 7 million barrels per day as the various other new things that are coming online in Iraq uh, will be going up to around like 5.5 or 5.6. But things like that, stuff off of Guyana, the stuff they keep finding offshore of Brazil, because there's more waiting offshore of Brazil. Brazil is uh, not done with us. And uh, even the stuff back up home up in Alaska, although not to a large extent, uh, not in terms of like huge volume, but just in the fact that it is similar, it's, you know, nearer to surface and it is under uh, preferably high pressure. Uh, so a lot of the stuff that's happened over the last 10 years has been stuff that is actually more lent us back upwards, not to the heights of, you know, between 50 and 60 to one, like we saw in the, uh, the energy yield ratio, uh, in regards to the energy yield ratio peak, uh, then that, then that was the, the peak of the prosperity age in the 50s and 60s. However, because of the advance of technology that was allowed by uh, by all of this, uh, that kept marching forward and all of the various eases it brought uh, by the 90s and 2000s, even though the 90s and very early 2000s were, you know, lower, they were more around 45 to one uh, compared to the 50s and 60s. That's why the 90s and early 2000s are still considered like the peak of the prosperity age, just because uh, although the total energy yield was a bit lower and things were slightly more expensive relatively than the 50s and 60s, the availability of everything overall because of the advance of technology that was allowed by this that had then become publicly available by that time is what made the 90s and early 2000s the actual like peak. And then we uh, hit the slope and then the, you know, slope was also uh, brought on by other things like global oil production flatlining in the mid to late 2000s, which brought the whole oil price spike up to 147 in present day 2024 dollars. That would be the equivalent of 180 uh, dollars per barrel, uh, which, you know, crashed the global economy. And since which it has not really returned to normal. As you can see by the graphs I've made, uh, which are available in the Google Docs. You guys know where those are, hopefully, because I've shown you a million times. But uh, uh, you can see in many graphs. Uh, how it's uh, for a lot of countries just goes flat after you know 2008 or after the 2010s. Uh, some countries were already flat for other reasons, like Bahamas is entirely reliant on tourism. Uh, other countries are still growing, uh, even inflation adjusted, because these are the GDPs adjusted to inflation. The countries you'll notice for the most part that are still growing rapidly even adjusted to inflation, although over the last two years, Bangladesh has started to crash. Uh, but that's because their power grid is failing because 
of similar reasons to South Africa's power grid failing, a lot of internal corruption and money embezzlement stuff. But uh, you'll notice most of the ones that are still growing rapidly are countries that are still third world countries or were third world countries and are now second world countries. Uh, so countries where even though a sort of availability or affordability of life, uh, you know, declination has occurred, the level it has dropped back down to is still way above the like quality of life level that the people in those countries were previously at until like the last 20 years or so. So they are still closing a distance up to like the current level, even if the current level, which is around 40 now in 2024, uh, is, you know, lower than 56 to one, which was the peak. Uh, so even if, you know, the level they're climbing up to is a lower level, it is still a higher level than they themselves were living at. So that is why a lot of, uh, a lot of these countries are still even inflation adjusted, rapidly economically growing. Uh, then you have other countries that, uh, stalled for other reasons, but, uh, yeah, you can see a lot of countries uh, kind of just went flat uh, after the 2010s. Uh, some, like Brazil here, just even utterly trashed after the 20 or after uh, we hit the 2010s. Uh, Canada, you know, has been flat, but Canada also has been not really all that interesting. Uh, no offense to you guys, but uh, Chile went flat. Uh, China started uh, to flatten themselves off. Although they had an upsurge post-COVID, but now they're going down, inflation adjusted. Uh, in terms of their nominal numbers for GDP, if you looked, uh, they've, for the last three years, they've been flat nominally right at uh, 18 trillion. However, because, you know, you then adjust for the inflation of each year, the value of their economy has been starting to drop pretty quickly since it's not moving. Uh, which is why, you know, if you look at countries like, say, Canada, who've had a two trillion GDP uh, or sorry, or uh, who have gradually grown from, I think, like one point five up to two trillion over the last uh, you know number of years, it looks like they stay flat. And for countries like, uh, for example, let's go down to uh, the UK, love to bully the UK. Uh, who have been flat at $3 trillion in terms of face value GDP. Uh, if you actually look at inflation adjusted, uh, the reason it seems like it's gotten so much worse in the UK for a lot of people is because actual real value-wise adjusted for inflation, uh, their economy has actually shrunk down by 25%. And uh, this is worse. Uh, the, this is worse for you know countries like Brazil, where... They got, you know, they got so far, but in the end, it didn't really matter or didn't even matter. How does the Lincoln Park song go? It didn't even matter, I think. I tried so hard and got so far. Uh, and then uh, where are some of the other bad ones? Oh, yeah, Japan. Yeah. Uh, so this is this is why uh, Japanese people are complaining about uh uh, affordability of, of life crisis and why they won't have kids and stuff. Uh, so they've been flat at 5 trillion, uh, you know, face value GDP uh, for a while, uh, for like 30 years, which translates into, in reality, they got up close to 10, but have since declined down uh, towards only around five. So uh, that's... Uh, that's like real reason behind that. And like I said, uh, countries that were at a much lower uh, quality of life uh, are the ones that are still growing rapidly. For Like, for example, Vietnam, even inflation adjusted, they're still growing rapidly because they were still down here quality of life wise. And even though the total bar uh, is a little bit higher than this now, it's back up to about 40 uh, even though the bar is lower than it was at the supposed, you know, peak in the 50s and 60s, it's still way higher than they previously were at just a few decades ago. So they are still, uh, and other countries like them, are still climbing up to meet it pretty fast. However, once they meet it, then you will see them level out and flatten off like 
uh, all of the, the other modern or postmodern countries already have. Okay, that was a way off ramble that I shouldn't have gone on. Uh, who caused that? Uh, Yogar, that's your fault. Uh, mostly safe. So, did, did you actually trip on a cord? Did that actually happen to you, Josh? Or is this, or are you just, uh, wait, no, I thought you did say that happened to you. Unless that's someone else that I'm thinking of. Whoa, a chatter who responds when addressed. That is a rarity. Or I, I thought your thing was, was just the bad posture. Okay, it wasn't you. I'm trying to remember who it was then. <clears throat> yeah, back back when I still uh, had a real job, quote unquote, uh, back when I uh, did desk security for the university, they did make us watch a like really long video about not placing power cords in inopportune places, uh, which was kind of never really applicable because like. The only things we had in there were the laptop and uh, the space heater for, you know, once it started getting, like, uh, below zero outside. And the plug was, like, right next to the seat. So it wasn't really anything that we ever, like, had to bother with. But they did make us watch an hour-long video about not placing plugs, like, incorrectly for power cords. But uh, I did get paid for watching the video. But that was back in the, the good old days, in the old times, back when I got $17 an hour. Uh, okay, so that should theoretically be it. Uh, unless any uh, anybody else questions anything or says anything. So I'll wait like 20 seconds or 30 seconds for the usual delay. But if that's it, then I will no longer be holding Josh here and he can go play his video games. And I will get back to uh, making graphs and editing videos. Videos that uh, are, as I said, as I said, uh, starting to get kind of shadow banned. Uh, like, you know, my views were never the greatest, but, you know, I usually got like between 400 and 1,000, and now we're running into a 150 ceiling, apparently. Uh, the only things that break that ceiling seemingly are stuff that have been up for a while, uh, stuff that is, you know, heavily topical, or stuff that involves uh, Somalia, because Somalis always turn up to videos about Somalia. Uh, by now hundreds, they used to turn up in the thousands, but uh, they still turn up in the hundreds. And I'm, I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to think. What were, what were the other things that usually everyone always shows up to? Uh, the drought videos, everyone shows up to by the thousands, as long as there is a drought to mention, uh, which there's not right now. Uh, which praise God, that is a good thing that there is, you know, that the the Western U.S. is not, like, de depleted of water at the moment. I'm not wanting that to happen. When that was happening, though, I was getting videos with, like, hundreds of thousands of views, which typically yielded, like, hundreds of dollars of ad revenue. So the only other thing that would actually probably solve that is going into politics, which I'm not going to do because I cannot care. All right, that looks like that's it for everybody then. So that is the end of the stream. Uh, I will see you guys next time.